Welcome. In today's episode, we will review a new law that was passed in the state of Tennessee, and it relates to child support. Uh, this particular law affects what is called the fatalities of drunk driving. And so we decided to do some research on it because it was widely reported in the news. In addition, we decided let's also look at other things that affects child support and drivers. Uh, the relationship between the two may not seem obvious, but we figured would cover things that affects drivers. So we look at independent drivers such as Uber, Lyft, and the likes. So as it was reported in the news in the state of Tennessee, they passed a new law. It's a bill that requires drunk drivers to pay child support to the orphan kids. That's a tragic story, and this was reported by Matt, Ad Matt Adams from the National and World. Uh, fair use, but I've given credit for writing this on April 21, 2022. And basically, it's a new law that says if a child who become orphaned as a result of fatality and drug driving, then that driver will pay child support. So here it is again in another uh, article called The Center Square, and this is reported by John Steiff. Same thing. Tennessee bill would require restitution for children of parents killed by DUI. So we decided to look into this bill, okay? Again, it was widely reported, what's going on? So this bill started off with what is called the Bentley Law. For those who live in Tennessee, uh, this is well known. Uh, and so they passed it that says that if a driver who's convicted of drunk driving and the child is still on what is called maintenance or child support, and that driver is responsible for that child until the age of 18. So let's look more into it. Now, as we go through this presentation, if you're not in Tennessee, you would ask, why would you want to watch the rest of this? But stay tuned. We do have a little nuance that you want to pay attention to because this affects other states. Because if this moved to your state, you would have to understand this particular law. Not that you're involved in a drug driving, but, you know, nevertheless. We start a series called the Financial Education, and we believe that you should improve your financial education. And so we're going to intertwine child support and, and financial education. And we start off with excellent credit. Yes, use this opportunity. Watch the videos on credit report, your credit reporting, and child support, and remove child support from your credit report. Hello, my name is Chris. And in this session, we're looking at Tennessee as it relates to drunk driving and the child support program. We're also going to cover uh, independent drivers, Uber, Lyft, and 1099 independent drivers to see how the law fares. Let's get started. As always, we ask for a gift or a donation. Uh, we take Cash App as well as PayPal. And while we bring you these research, we ask for a $25 gift, but we will be satisfied with a $5 cash up if you can spare that. But please donate to our channel as well as we ask you to subscribe. If you're new to this channel, we ask you to subscribe um, so you can get the latest update on our research. We also broadcast our show on podcast, Spotify, Apple and on Amazon, as well as your local uh, podcasts. So please check us out. So let's move to the bill. It's called House Bill 1834. And it starts off with that the courts shall determine an amount that is reasonable and necessary for the maintenance of a victim's child after considering all relevant factors. Basically, most of the financial needs. And it is tragic. If a parent were to pass, die as a result of a drunk driver, then someone is responsible for those children. And so this bill is the hopes of solving that problem, if there is a problem. Uh, it says financial res resources, or well as if the child was a ward of the state. And so that's what led us to look into, in addition to having it popular broadcast, we want to see further into this law. This bill goes on to say that while maintenance is being charged to the person charged with the DUI, it goes to the clerk as a trustee. Yes. In other words, the court and the clerk becomes the trustee of the account. 
But here it also says this, that if the parents, I mean, if the child was awarded, let's say, a payout from a civil action, well, this is what this law says. That if the court's order defendant, which is the, the driver in question, makes a maintenance payments, then if there's a civil action, a portion of that civil action goes to the court. Yes, this is in, this is in the law. In other words, if the child, the surviving child, had a, a civil action and an award was, was made and there's a child support payment, then the child support agency and the courts, acting as a trustee, gets what is called the offset. So in other words, they split the award money. So that's interesting. If the, if the child you know, has an award, why would you need child support? Why would you want to go through the courts? Again, comment below. If Does this make sense to you? I'd love to hear from you. Now, let's look at the state of Tennessee in terms of population, right? Since this particular problem, we wanted to see how does this problem of drunk driving, which affects all states, affects Tennessee. There are about 7 million people in Tennessee, around 41,000 men who have enrolled or forced into the child support program. And on average, the child support agency, they receive about $66 million from the federal government in terms of remittance. That was in 1920. And for the last five years, they've been consistent. It's, you know, it's around $600 million. So looking at this fatality question and the bill that was passed, remember, it passed the House and the Senate. So this must have been a huge problem. Well, I decided to go to the Homeland Security where the Tennessee Traffic Fatality Report. Let's look at the numbers. And the numbers I have here is from 2017 to 2021. Again, you can go out and you can search the internet for the results, but here it is. So for the last five years, they have had 13, about 1,100 fatalities. Again, these are not accidents or crashes. These are fatalities involving drunk drivers. In 2021, the number was 1,327. So let's step back from this. The Senate and the House, the, the government of Tennessee, passed a bill that affects child support when the actual number is around 13, 1,300 fatalities. Now, you can comment below but the numbers does not seem fair. In other words, a very small percentage of the 7 million people are involved in a fatality with a DUI. And of that number, there's a smaller percentage involve children. Again, comment as to why this bill was necessary or why did they made a, this fanfare about it when the, you know, the, in, the analytics says it's only 1,300 people involved in that. And over the years, it has not increased dramatically. So again, comment. Are we saying that we try to solve a problem that is not a problem for the state of Tennessee? You decide. So let's move to the second part of our, our discussion, which is drivers who are independent drivers or who are 1099 workers. And the 1099 workers are barbershop here, stylist, you name it. As you know, child support only affects independent, only affects what is called workers, or in another place, W-2 workers. So here from the, what is called the guide to income for, again, Tennessee, up to 50% of your income is, a, is, is eligible to be affected by child support. And, and for the employer to be involved in the program, they pay about a, a, a fee of about $5 per paycheck for performing that function. Remember, your employer is performing a service, basically a third-party debt collection service, and they're paid a fee for that. Now, someone would say $5, you know, who cares? It's, it's still money, right? They're already taking 50% for child support. Now they're taking another uh, $5 from from you to pay the child support. So let's deal with the 1099 workers. As you know, uh, 
back as I said early in all my other videos that the 1099 workers do not pay child support in fact they're not involved in the child support program only regular workers so here's a statute relating to what is called self-employed in Tennessee it's called title 36 uh, section 36-5-501 that's the income withholding section but inside the income withholding section is a little carve out what is called obligors that are self-employed yes I know men should not be called obligor but for the case for the sake of this video let's call obligor so they're saying that for self-employed people that they cannot go through what is called the child support program or the disbursement unit they have to follow the guidelines within this section of the law because why because 1099 workers, intermittent workers, are not involved in the program. So here's how they break it, broke it down based on our research. So if you're an independent contractor, you know, a driver, Uber, Lyft, but just an independent contractor and you're self-employed, whether it's a partnership, whether it's a limited liability corporation, or wherever the compensation is, it comes from your private transaction. This is what the law, the, the section of, of the statute says. It says that you must, as an independent conscious, set up what is called an independent deposit account. Yes, they can order you to set up another account for the purposes of child support. Okay? And then once you set that account up, you now have to give the Department of Social Services a written authorization such that they can disperse or take money from that account by automatic banking withdrawal let's review that again if you are an independent contractor or a 1099 worker you can be ordered to set up a separate account and then from that account is that you have to provide a written authorization such that they can deduct money which means you're going to be asked to deposit money from your earnings or you know uh, from your 1099 process and put that into the separate account now immediately if that doesn't spell constitutional violation um, again comment tell me how to, that is but this is how they handle it in Tennessee now I've said this in many programs 1099 workers are not involved in child support but states are finding very creative ways to work around the program and this is one of the creative ways there are several types and I'll bring those to you in further research so here's our website it's called childsupport.newzendler.com where we provide you more information on how you can defeat child support so as we've reviewed the the, the drunk driver that there's a law passed that affects a very small handful of people and also we said please work on improving your credit you need credit if you were if you live in this country and you want to create a spending power you have to have fair or a or what is called executable credit it's important so here we are at the end um, again please subscribe if this is the first time uh, next hit the notification bell and we do ask for a donation so as this presentation says the drunk driver law that everyone's talking about affects less than 1300 fatalities in the state of Tennessee which means something else is afoot or as they say there's more to it than that and second the 1099 independent driver in Tennessee is being forced into setting up a separate account so that they can move the money so that you have the responsibility to move the money from your account to that account and then provide written authorization why because they cannot take money from a business account because that's not a relationship account thank you for tuning in and we look forward to bringing you other information have a good day